Okay. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, transportation community input session and uh, the uh, regular monthly meeting of the state uh, meeting of the Lions for Better Choice. We're at the Alexander uh, residence, and uh, the first thing we do is introduction. So we go around the room and uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Michael Nolte. I'm the uh, uh, Executive Director of Alliance for Better District 6 and one of the co-founders. And I guess we go from the front here, to Michael. It's okay. I was drinking all the water. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Michael Yarney. I'm with Bill. We're a, um, a Hayes Valley-based development company presenting on a project today. I'm Amber Shipley. I'm here representing the SFMTA. Okay. Hi, I'm Annie Dolga. I'm also here representing the SFMTA. Uh, I'm Bradley Dunn. Um, I'm also representing the SFMTA, and I'm the District 6 liaison uh, for the SFMTA. So um, if I've got a bunch of cards. If you're having any meeting type problems, uh, go ahead and reach out to me, and I can put you in touch with you know, whatever project or whatever uh, person is uh, the right person to address your issues. You? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Richard, Richard uh, Resident, 230 Eddie. Hi, Mary. Mary, yeah, I live here. 230 Eddie. Thank you. Okay. Susan Bryan, videographer, resident. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, you moved. Okay. All right. I thought you were trying to get away. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ram Masip Akbar. Um, I'm a resident of housing at Alexander Resident. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, um, on the back of the, I hope everybody's signed in and gotten a copy of the uh, agenda that um, everybody has. Um, first, uh, next item is uh, the ground rules. On the back of the uh, agenda is um, basically it says uh, turn off any uh, pager, cell phones, or electronic devices. Uh, uh, please, uh, when you're talking, speak responsibly, emphasize positive feedback to the presenters. Uh, try not to disrupt the uh, <coughs> side conversations and, and so forth. Uh, and we are videotaping this, so uh, um, your, your voice would be picked up if you're having a side conversation. Um, and uh, we have a, a description about door prices. We'll be having door prices. Uh, everybody can get two tickets at, at the time when we'll be doing the door prize uh, raffle. Uh, so if you get a, door, a, a ticket and you decide to leave, you've got to give the ticket to somebody else. Um, so that way we're not just calling a bunch of numbers and there's nobody here. Um, and then as far as food, uh, once the food is here, uh, just uh, go for one, one helping and then when there's uh, still food, then go for the second helping. Don't just dump a bunch of it on your plate and then there's no room for, there's nothing no food left for the, uh, everybody else, so there's no hoarding of food. Um, okay, adoption of the agenda. Can I, uh, can I have a, uh, I second it. All right. Um, is there, um, okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, any no's? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Um, next issue, Susan, is membership. Uh, our, or, uh, the Alliance for Better District 6 is a uh, membership organization. Uh, we don't rely on any grants. Uh, we do only uh, do membership. Only two ways we get uh, funds is uh, through uh, our donation can as well as um, as well as our uh, uh, membership dues. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to have a little uh, info on our organization, uh, we have a our history and I also have membership packets if anybody wants to Uh, 
Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Yarny. I'm a resident of San Francisco, I live in Bernal Heights, and our company uh, is based in Hayes Valley at Linden, which is the little alley that connects to Patricia's Green. If any of you have ever gone to Blue Bottle, um, which is a coffee place on Linden, we're, the, we're right upstairs, so that's where we're located. Not too far. I'm here tonight to just briefly, I'm going to try to be brief, and I have handouts as well if anyone's interested. Uh, describe a project, a residential project that we are um, proposing. Uh, here, great. A uh, residential project that we're proposing on Eddy Street. Um, although it's 838 Eddy, the 800 block of Eddy, which is the block between Van Ness and Franklin. So hopefully everyone knows where that is. Um, it is um, on this map right here. Um, it has. Um, the site actually um, fronts Eddy Street. Um, it is a rather unattractive, turn the page, it's a rather unattractive concrete two-story parking garage that was built in about 1979 in an era when parking garages were popular. Um, it is an uh, unfortunate blighted parking garage. If you turn the next page, you'll see where the parking garage is located on a map. And if you turn the next page, you'll see some photos of the parking garage today. Um, we have been uh, meeting with everyone in the immediate surrounding blocks. Um, and um, we've gotten the overwhelming um, uh, feedback that uh, the neighborhood would love to see this parking garage go away. Um, there is unfortunately drug dealing and crime that happens there. Um, many of you may know the Burger King drive through um, There's a Burger King on, on Van Ness. The drive-through actually goes through this parking lot um, and then exits on Van S. So um, as part of our project, we'd also be eliminating the Burger King drive-through. Um, <laughs> the, the project, the project um, is proposed for 126 residential units. You see an image on this page. So we'd be replacing, we'd be demolishing that concrete parking garage and building um, a mid-rise tower, about 12 stories tall. Um, with a mix of studios, one bedrooms and two bedroom apartments. At least 40% of the units would be two bedrooms. Um, we would be putting some parking underground. Um, the parking garage that would services a building that's actually on Van Ness, um, which is um, an old office building built at the same time. It's the same building that has the Burger King restaurant in it. And so we are, we've worked out, we're working out a deal where we're providing replacement parking underground for some of those office tenants that are in the adjoining office building. Um, our project would, in addition to having about 40 replacement spaces underground for that office, would have about 50 to 60 residential spaces, parking spaces. Um, there would be one-to-one um, -one bike parking and we would be doing extensive landscaping on the roof, on Eddie, and on Willow, which is actually a really interesting little alley. So if you turn the next page, you'll see a plan view. This is the one I'm looking at. I just want to show everybody. Uh, this shows you our proposals for Eddie. We're proposing to build a little pocket park. You can see that right here. It's a little bulb out um, that would we take one on-street parking space and make a garden and have benches and seating. That would be adjacent to the lobby which would be the grand lobby for this would be, there'd be actually two lobbies, one on Eddy, you see right here, and a, a lobby off of Willow as well, and those two lobbies would connect internally. Um, we're proposing re-landscaping re the area behind um, 815 Van Ness, which is that office building with the Burger King that's currently in it. Um, let me just turn the page. If you turn the page and you look at this these set of images here, You'll see some of the land, landscaping concepts. This is the Eddy Street Pocket Park. Um, on the back, and this, this, if you turn the page once more, you'll see um, this image shows on, on Willow, there'll be townhomes with stoops, front steps, and gardens. So Willow is going to be a substantially different street if we're, this project moves forward instead of being an ugly country garage. There actually be homes with stoops and porches and gardens. And then uh, I already mentioned on Eddie, there's a lobby. There's also one bedroom lots off of Eddie. And then you can see a typical floor plan at the higher levels here. So this would be an elevator building. It would begin about 12 stories. 
want to make sure we're the overall site plan is here. Let me turn one more page. Um, you can see um, off of Willow the stoops. You see a big there's a big garden off of Willow as well, which it provides one lobby entry. And then and then on, on Eddie there's a there is um, also a lobby and uh, one store and townhomes that you can walk up to. This is uh, probably a really helpful view. This is what um, Willow Street would look like with the townhomes on it. This image here. So this is the existing um, 815 Van S. This is what you see in the background. And this is our proposed building with the townhomes fronting Willow and the garden entrance off of Willow. If you walk on Willow today, there's just a giant concrete wall, which is where the parking garage is. And then last but not least, we provided an image, a kind of aerial image that shows you the building in its context. So if you turn to this last page, and just to give you some orientation, this area right here is Van Ness, where my finger is, okay? There are a series of um, seven and six story buildings on Van Ness here. Um, of course, you can see Cathedral Hill in the background. This is our proposed building which is about 12 stories. It conforms to existing zoning. Um, we would be, um, we're likely doing our affordable housing on site. So there would be 14 and a half percent or 18 of the units would be permanently affordable for low income households. Um, anyway, that's, pardon? Yes, as I said. Those are not affordable. Those are, they're called affordable, but they're not, they're not affordable. No, these are these are fifty five percent area need and income, which is yeah, actually that's not that's, that's, no, that's actually that's low income. Building is ten percent, ten to twenty percent. There is a Michael. There's a spectrum of affordability from ten percent to thirty percent to fifty five. Yeah, no, I'm just saying when. Oh, here. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Which are uh, and all the people that have uh, vouchers. So anyway, there will be 18 units on site um, of uh, what, what the Mayor's Office of Housing calls 55% uh, area median income, which is, by the Mayor's Office of Housing, low income housing. Um, so this is, uh, anyway, are there any other questions, uh, any questions about the project? Um, oh, one more thing that's super important. We are probably, we've been working on it for about eight months. Um, we are about four months away from being at the Planning Commission. We hope to be at the Planning Commission by December. Could be as late as January or February. Um, that's about all I wanted to share. I'm, I'm here to hear any feedback, comments, questions. Uh, I have a few examples of this. Uh, how much about, um, about a in, uh, income uh, one year? How many thousand? For, for the below market rate units? Yes, for So each unit, so what happens is, it's a little complicated, but let me go bear with you. So we have a 14.5% of the units must be designated as below market rate units. That equals 18 units in this building. Those units are distributed according to how many unit types there are. So there will be some studio apartments, some one the studios, the ones, and the twos are priced differently. Studios are priced for a one-person household. The one-bedrooms are priced for a two-person household. And the two-bedrooms are usually priced for a three- to four-person household. So I know that's a lot. So the, the rents are different depending on the household size. So what household size were you thinking of? Studio, one-bedroom, or two-bedroom? Okay, studio first. Uh, how about a studio? A studio? Okay, great. So just to be clear, that would be for one person. Just want to be, just want to be clear. Yes, they, oh, okay. Yeah. So for one person, for right now, the income level is 55% area median income. So this is low income. The monthly rent right now is around, I believe, around 700 or 650 a month. Uh, okay, facing this is right now the headquarters of the Electronic Front Frontier Foundation. Like 
depends on the size. If it's a studio, a one, or a two. They have different household sizes, and so the rent levels are different based on the household size and on the prices. So, so what is the size? Are you talking about yeah, I was 400, 500 square feet? So studios? No, 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 I mean the, the, the footage. Yeah, but it depends. Some are 350, some are 450. Okay. So they're efficient. Yeah, well, they're just studio apartments. That's our standard. That's what you do all over the city. One bedrooms are about 600 to 700 square feet, and two bedrooms can be around 900 square feet. We do smaller units generally because the market is, at, is telling us that's what people want, because unfortunately, rents are so expensive. Um, front, the Electronic Frontier Foundation is yeah, our that, neighbor. They're yeah, right they're across right across the street, the street yeah. from you, yeah. yeah. We've been meeting with them from day one, and they, they're actually supporters, and they're really great neighbors. Uh -huh. Is there any other questions for um, the back? Okay, for the one bedrooms, how big is that? The one bedrooms? Mm -hmm. They're a range from about 550 square feet on the small side to about 700 square feet on the large side. How big is that? Uh, um, well, let me see. <laughs> let me guess. This room is probably, you know what? If this is probably from here back. It's probably about 700 square feet. Six, 650 square feet. That's my, that would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Does that include the closets? Yeah. I, <laughs> Doing my best. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I do want to say something that for all the below market rate units, the mayor's office of housing, the mayor's office, the city's mayor's office of housing, administers. You have to sign up and you have to apply to prove that you qualify. So people have to show that their income level qualifies for those units. So somebody who makes a market rate income cannot rent a the low income unit, for example. Yeah, but it's sort of like two and a half times the amount of the rent, or three times the amount of the rent. Uh, about uh, parking, I have to pay or not parking? Pardon? Oh, oh, do you have to pay for parking? Yes. Yeah, everyone has to pay for parking. But the, but, the, um, but the way it works today is that the same ratio, whatever parking you end up providing, I think right now I told you it's about 60, for 60 spaces for 126 units. So that's about point that's about 40% of the units have spaces. So only about 40% of the 18 below market rate units would have parking. And so for those people who want parking, they would pay a below market rate parking rent. Yeah. Cool. Do you say to go down to, do we go down to the mayor's office? The mayor's office of housing, exactly. And they have a whole application process. And I think Michael was alluding to this. You have to sign up and get it, there's a queue of people, and whenever these units come on a line, they, you have to pre-qualify. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is there storage outside the unit? Yeah, we have um, both bicycle storage and we have mini storage on site, so people, because when you have smaller units, it's very helpful to have on-site storage. So what other amenities besides the units are will there be in the building? Like there, the, yeah, it's a great question. There are, in addition to two roof decks and gardens, there is a, there's going to be an athletic, like a, like a workout uh, room. Um, there's going to be a bike repair station, which is actually really nice. So you can not just store your bikes, but you can work on them. There is probably going to be a kind of a, a lounge up on the top floor next to the roof deck. So if you wanted to have a picnic or a party, there'd be a barbecue and a sink and you can cook and do that kind of thing. And is there a commercial space? There is no commercial is space. Is that everything gave away? Yeah, you yeah. oh no, well, you can have there. mine. Um, uh, there is no commercial space. We um, Actually, what we are proposing to do, and I don't know how people feel about this, the people in 815 Van Ness and all around the neighborhood really dislike the Burger King. And we are, um, in fact, they really dislike it. They and got rid of McDonald's. That's not fair. So we're, we're, you're not, you're we, rid of all the, the places we can. So afford. we've been asked by the people in the neighborhood if we'd be, if we'd be open to trying to replace Burger King with a healthier restaurant. So oh, we wow. are actually looking at trying to buy out Burger King and putting in a new.